today we're going to take a look at how rocket engines work. And we're not going to look at a lot of the complex chemistry and things like that involved. We're going to look at the very basic physics principles of momentum and momentum conservation. Now, to start, we need to define a system. So a system is anything that I define. So if I have an object here, an object here, and I just draw a box around those, then I'm defining that as my system. So when I talk about the momentum of a system, I'm talking about what's happening inside that system. Now momentum itself is mass, which is how much stuff there is of something, times velocity. Mass times velocity is momentum. And if a system doesn't have any outside external stuff happening, air resistance, friction, any external forces, then the system's momentum is conserved. And the basic idea behind a rocket is that the entire momentum of the rocket and the fuel together as a system is zero, which sounds a little bit weird. But initially you have a rocket, you have some fuel, and so the total system momentum is zero. When you fire off the rocket, the mass goes one way, the rocket goes the other way, the total momentum of the system still remains zero because you have negative momentum this way and positive momentum this way. There's a nice little demonstration we can look at right here. So here we have this cart and I've got a spring gun on the cart and I launch the spring gun and you can see that the ball is going one way, the cart goes the other. So the cart would be the rocket in that situation and the ball would be the fuel. Now, obviously, rockets don't just launch one big lob of stuff, right? It's something that happens over time. So let's go over here and look at a demonstration that's going to help explain that a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> what I have here is this heavy plate that can swing and some lightweight ball bearings. When I let this ball bearing run down this tube, it has a collision with the plate. Now, in this collision, we're going to define my ball bearing as one of my masses. This plate is the other. As my system, the momentum is remaining conserved. Now, initially, it's a little bit different than a re true recoil problem because the plate's at zero. This is moving, so the system has some momentum. When this imparts and collides with the plate, some of this momentum is transferred to the plate. Some of this momentum is recoiled backwards. The overall momentum stays the same. And you can see the plate, it moves a little bit. But what you'll notice is that the plate doesn't move much. In the example of the spring gun in the cart, we were throwing a very large mass. And so if I hit this with my hand or something, you can see we get a pretty large recoil. But it turns out that's not how rocket engines work, right? We don't like throw some big piece of lead out of the back once of a rocket engine and the rocket leaves. Instead, we do something called continuous mass transfer or continuous momentum transfer, which means that instead of just dropping one little ball bearing and seeing how far the plate deflects, Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a continuous stream of ball bearings. So I'm continually adding mass, transferring momentum to the system. See that? So when I do it that way, you can see we get a very large plate deflection and the plate stays deflected the entire time because it's maxed out to some maximum force behind when it hits the bucket. And so this shows you a nice example of the difference between discrete momentum transfer, individual hits, and continuous long form momentum transfer, which is how it turns out rocket engines work, right? We eject mass over a long period of time and the momentum of the rocket slowly increases. Now remember, the momentum of the fuel is also negatively continually to increase negatively while the momentum of the rocket increases positively so the overall momentum of the system of the rocket and fuel together is still zero the entire time you're having that mass transfer or momentum transfer but when you're out in space and you're far away from everything else you don't have any atmosphere to push off you don't have any ground to push off or anything like that this is how you move something so the old saying in space travel is in order to go somewhere you have to leave something behind so rocket fuel, or in this case, some ball bearings. Pretty cool.